The tragedy of Nigeria began in 1986 when we did the structural adjustment program. When we were persuaded to devalue our currency every week for 32 years. When I went to school, and many of you are here, the Naira was $1.50. The Naira was almost one pound sterling. They came here, persuaded some brilliant men from Harvard and the World Bank that weekly devaluation was wonderful. 32 years of devaluing your currency until we hit 527. And they were still telling us that the Naira was still overvalued. That brought poverty, misery upon us. Then interest rates went to 30%. So nobody could build a factory, start a farm, produce anything, or create jobs. Because every time you bring in a shipload of rice, you also bring in a shipload of unemployment. Because you are transferring your wealth to sustain other economies. Somehow, Nigerians didn't notice it. So we became a nation of importers. Toothpicks. Toothpicks. Each year it cost us $18 million. Importing toothpicks. Tomato pays $400 million. So you talked about tomatoes now. One basket in town now is less than 2,000 naira. The farmers are losing money because the processors don't have enough funds to set up factories. They are going to do tomato paste. It's food grade stainless steel. You can't just use anything because you'll be putting poison in people's stomachs. Two factories have started off. I believe by the middle of next year, we can comfortably tell importers of tomato paste to stop. But when you do, you make enemies. Even the rice we're trying to, to, to reduce, we have enemies, heavy enemies. People who can kill if they have a chance because you're spoiling their business. And I, let nobody take it lightly. These guys have seized this country's economy. They've taken us hostage and they have no intention of giving up. Because this is a huge market, a very sweet market, and they have taken control. And I'm saying it because I have been in this business for 41 years and I can tell you some history. Abdullah Adamu is here. Import, import, import milk, sugar, toothpicks, toothpaste, handkerchiefs, pencils. We don't make. To cure Nigerians of that malady will take a while. It will take a strong government. That's the truth. And they are not happy that we are cutting down. When we cut down, they lose money there. So you see all sorts of publications. We are telling lies. We are not growing rice. We are trying to demoralize the local farmers and make sure that the economy fails. That's the story of imports. Now, I read a story recently in the newspapers. The French ambassador, the Champagne ambassador in Nigeria, gave an article to The Guardian. He said Nigerians love life. We are the biggest consumers of champagne on planet Earth, more than the French who make it. There are parties you attend in some places where they only drink is champagne. Of course, the individual is free to spend his money, but his money comes from Nigeria's commonwealth. So on imports, it will take a while for us to get used to local goods and accept that we should consume what we, we produce and produce what we want to consume. So I take your point, we have to take 10 measures to cut down on imports because these young boys and girls who have no jobs today are not going to allow us to carry on enjoying life at their expense. They need jobs. They need jobs, they are children. They've graduated, they've come back home to begin a second childhood because there's no factory to employ them. And the ministries can't take any more. But somebody is making sure you fail when you want to produce at home.